says that T'Pol's from the Children of Echoes. But how do we track him down? Just ask around until we find him? Let's start by talking to someone we know. It'll be faster that way. At this time and place, I'll bet the easiest person to find is... Wakey, wakey, Shilonen! <sighs> oh, it's you. <sighs> okay, give me a second. I'll come down. I climb trees to fly further and see farther. I don't usually stop for a nap. Well, we're not all like you. Always full of energy, even after flying around all day. Yeah. So, uh, you've come all this way and interrupted my precious nap time. Might I inquire as to, uh, why? I'm sorry, Shilonen, but it couldn't wait. Does the name T'Pol mean anything to you? He's a craftsman, apparently. Huh. To Paul. Yeah, that rings a bell. I think that's Puma's child. Nope, I'm afraid you're a few years too late. Uh, why are you looking for him? Huh, phlogiston wings. Wow, okay. <laughs> the kid actually pulled it off. Well, looks like uh, no more rest for me today. Pulled it off? You mean he's tried making something like this before? Yeah, he started trying to build a flying machine right after he got back from the Flower Feather Clan. So right after he went wingless then. Was this flying machine anything like the gun you made me? You mean your gun that's harder to tame than the proudest Kukasaur? No, he wanted to build something that allows anyone to fly freely, even if they're not naturally gifted. But he never got very far back then, though. Blew up his workshop a few times and barely made it out alive. I never really kept up with him after that. His parents traveled a lot in their youth and only returned to the tribe after he was born. But they settled in a remote area and don't interact with other people much. Which means most people in the tribe don't know them very well. Your best bet is to chat to his direct family. I'll uh, go get Puma. Wait for me in front of the workshop. I won't be long. Allow me to introduce to Paul's mother, Puma. Hello, Mir! Oh, save the pleasantries. I don't want to spend any longer talking about that boy than I have to. Uh, huh? I disowned him long ago. He is no child of mine. All he cared about was his pipe dream of reaching the sky. Oh, we tried to talk sense into him, but he was obsessed. <laughs> And then, when he left us, he spouted some nonsense about building a workshop in the sky to avoid the constant criticism of us ground dwellers. <laughs> he left his notebook behind. Whatever questions you have, you can look for them in there. I am done talking about him. He's no son of mine. He never called me mom anyhow. Hmm. Wow, they've really fallen out. Paimon sure wasn't expecting that. Her husband, T'Pol's father, uh, he passed away recently and T'Pol didn't even bother to show his face at the funeral. If you ask me, that was probably the final straw for Puma. I'll go keep her company. If there's anything else you need, just come and find me. Thank you. Okay, so this notebook is the only lead we've got now, right? What's in there? 
Hmm. Some early designs for the phlogiston wings. And some theorizing about an airborne workshop. Ochkanatlan. The Cinder City. Looks like that's where he got his technological inspiration from. So, was he serious about the workshop in the sky? But that's such a big project for one person. Do we think he actually pulled it off? Oh, yes. The one from the trial arena that was super high up. That balloon has been there for a while. And everyone's been wondering how it got up there. But what if that's the wrong question? What if it started off even higher up, above the clouds and out of view? And it only descended to its current height due to some kind of malfunction. Part of T'Pol's workshop? Seems likely. If T'Pol's base had been hiding above the clouds this whole time, that would definitely explain why Isidore couldn't find it. By myself? Possibly. But with a passenger, no chance. I doubt even phlogiston wings could take you up that high. At least, not without that relic DePaul mentioned in his notebook. Yeah, and he's probably holding on to it. We'll have to find another way. N nope. That's way beyond Paimon's altitude. Also, would you really expect Paimon to go up there and take on DePaul all by herself? Let's not worry. Just because we can't think of a solution doesn't mean no one else can. I'm not the only flying expert in my tribe, you know. Oh, good point. We should go ask Elder Opa! And Mutoda. He was quite the flying ace back in the day, too. Let's head back and see what they suggest. Chaska, you're finally back. Things are getting really tense in the tribe. Have you made any headway with your investigation? Some people even think we arrested the merchants just to support the flying squad and crack down on the phlogiston wings. We found some promising leads, but there's a major obstacle standing between us and the irrefutable evidence we need. A relic from the Cinder City? <sighs> so Ochkan's still managing to sow discord, even after all these years. An airborne workshop, and a hot air balloon above the trial arena. And that's where you're trying to get to now? Neither phlogiston wings nor a kukusaur can take you that high up. Do you really think that's where Tapal is hiding? Hmm. You know what? There might just be a way. Really? Do you still remember those spouts in the arena? When they were all blocked, the gaseous phlogiston was trapped and unable to flow. But now, it's flowing freely. If we were to block them up again... You mean, all of them except the one at the very top of the arena? To build up the pressure there? Precisely. With all the gaseous phlogiston flowing through one spout, it would create a high-pressure wind current. We just ride it up into the sky! Yes, it has its risks, but with Chaska's abilities, I think she could manage it. It's an extremely risky approach, but I agree that it's feasible. If you want to give it a try, check with Inkanak at the trial grounds. She can explain how to block the spouts. Chaska, if anyone has a hope of seizing this evidence from the high heavens, it is you. Goodness me, that is a very bold idea. Maybe so, 
but we have to act fast. What's the quickest way for us to block off the spouts? Uh, from a technical perspective, I'd have to advise taking some measurements and carefully planning this out first. But I'm guessing that's not what you want to hear. Then we'll have to take the rep and ready approach. See the solid phlogiston over there? Our prior inspections revealed that some kind of stable structure has formed inside, making it highly damage resistant. It's not without its weak points, but unless they're all struck at the same time, the structural integrity won't be threatened. So what happens if we do strike them all at once? It'll collapse. Okay, I see where you're going with this. Yeah, you got it. As long as you hit all the weak spots at once from the right angle, the solid phlogiston will fall right on top of the spout and block it up. You're right about rough and ready. Sounds like my kind of plan. Koya can give you a lift. She's actually been following us this whole time. Wow, Paimon didn't notice at all! Well, probably because she didn't want to get too close to humans. Or maybe just me. But right now, we need her power. Yes, up there. That's probably where Chime is. All right, let's go have a little talk with this to Paul. Like a regular hot air balloon from the outside, but up close, 
It's clearly been heavily remodeled. And sure enough, it only descended below the cloud line because the custom-built machinery malfunctioned. I should be able to figure it out with DePaul's notebook. Thankfully, I know a little DIY from fixing up my guns when they're having issues. Mm-hmm. That should just about do it. Now all it needs is a nice hard kick. Uh, maybe that works on your guns, but... Uh... Huh? We're really moving! Workshop in the sky! Oh, you gotta see it to believe it. Makes you wonder why T'Pol even bothers with phlogiston wings when he has tech like this! Well, according to the notebook, the platform beneath us runs on components from the Cinder City. Those can't be mass-produced. Also, I have some doubts about its mobility after seeing how it moved just now. For someone like T'Pol who dreams of flying freely, this definitely doesn't cut it. But if he's got that relic... He should be able to make a set of prototype wings for himself, right? Why bother making a whole flying workshop so he can mass produce them? But this doesn't add up. If he's already achieved the power of flight, then he must have bigger dreams we don't know about. But what? With any luck, we'll find the answers in his workshop. But that mechanism on top of the cage opens the door. She's still breathing, but barely. By the looks of it, DePaul was using these cages to extract phlogiston from the Kukasaurs. Once a Kukasaur is drained of phlogiston, it becomes too weak to move. We'll have to come back for these ones after dealing with DePaul. Let me see. Looks like a record of his phlogiston research. Log number 330. With the support of... I was finally able to launch the Airborne Workshop. Even though it relies on the Relic for 80% of its power supply, I've at least taken the first step. Log number 348. Research on the Relic is progressing well. I should be able to replicate the technology and scale up production very soon. Has proposed a name for this groundbreaking invention. The phlogiston wings. I think I'm getting close. Soon, I will achieve my dreams. Log number 377. Encountered some issues with the new smaller model phlogiston wings. The gaseous phlogiston showed some volatility during the refinement process. I think we should proceed at a more cautious pace with the refinement experiments. But after so many past failures, I have to prove that I will succeed this time. Log number 114 ran an experiment using kookasaurs to refine gaseous phlogiston. It was a success! Log number 117. I have started recruiting merchants and hunters to capture wild kookasaurs. Log number 121. Major breakthrough in the efficiency of phlogiston yield. Huh? So many parts have been crossed out! Yeah, probably the contact he alluded to in his other notebook. Guess he has a benefactor. Um, did anyone else notice how the numbering system in this notebook suddenly changed halfway through? We haven't got time for textual analysis, I'm afraid. Grab the notebook and let's press on. Hmm. <laughs> 
Huh. Never seen one of these before. Looks like this was built with the Cinder City components, too. Hey, you're not thinking of giving it a nice hard kick, are you? hard kick where it hurts. Aim for the weak spot. number 403 introduced me to some new comrades who fully support my ideas I told them that some Saurians are blessed with wings and some people with natural gifts while the uh, less fortunate among us can only look on longingly as they seize the skies but I also told them that progress can erase individual differences Think of the tools humanity has made to fight back against wild beasts. The law we have put in place to even the playing fields between the strong and the weak. I promised them that our research will be the new frontier of human progress. With our phlogiston wings, the power of flight will no longer be for a select few to enjoy. Imagine a world where the skies are for all to share. I only hope that when we finally achieve this goal, we'll be proud of me. Imagine a world where the skies are for all to share. Yes, what a wonderful world that would be. If only it were possible, we could respond faster, and so many tragedies could be prevented. But to Paul, what about the Saurians you're draining dry of Logiston? You're not sharing the sky, you're stealing it! Bad move. I won't let you get away with it. I'm fine. Let's keep moving. I don't think we'll find anything else here. Yeah. 
I can't believe he captured so many Kukasaurus. But right now, we have to focus on solving this problem at the source. Looks like we've reached the center of the workshop. And still no sign of Koya's baby! Let's search this area for now. If we still can't find Chime, we'll double back. What is it? Did you find Chime? Not yet, but look! It's another one of T'Pol's notebooks! Hmm. All right. Log number 428. We decided to restart the experiments on phlogiston refinement, but without telling. This is the final obstacle to the success of the Phlogiston Wings project. We cannot fall at the last hurdle. Log number 436. Earlier today, suggested using Kukasaurs as an intermediary to extract refined phlogiston. It's certainly feasible, but... Anyway. As long as our secret experiment succeeds, I'm sure won't bring it up again. Log number 443. We will conduct the experiment tomorrow. But birthday is coming up, so hopefully we'll have a birthday surprise for her. Log number 444. I guess whoever wrote down the log number was prevented from recording the results. Log number... zero. We lost many comrades in the accident. Among them are friends, lovers, and children. But we cannot stop now. We will keep their legacy alive and carry their dreams forward. As of today, we are scrapping the artificial refinement method. Instead, we will focus all our efforts on phlogiston extraction from live Kukasaurs. They are arrogant beasts whose existence in the wild serves no one but themselves. Their true worth lies in their sacrifice for the sake of human progress. To facilitate our operations, we will gradually move the Airborne Workshop closer to the Flower Feather Clan, even as we continue to expand it. All this we do to create a world where the skies are for all of humanity to share. All this we do to make T'Pol's dream a reality. Given the way this is written, not to mention the fact that the numbering has started over from zero. It kind of sounds like this is someone new. Does that mean that T'Pol's already... There's also a letter tucked in the end of the notebook. It's from Puma.
To Paul, I don't know where you are right now, so I don't know how to reach you. My best bet is to send this letter to the Flower Feather Clan. Your father is gravely ill. Oh, I know we've had our differences in the past, but he is still your father. Won't you come and visit him? Please. I know you never liked him and cared even less for me. All you ever yearned for is the sky. And your birth mother. But we'll still be waiting here for you if you do come back. This may be the last chance you'll get to see your father. So Puma's not T'Pol's real mom? Huh. Well, she did say he never called her mom, but I might assume she was just venting. We know that T'Pol's father passed away quite recently, and this letter looks recent. By contrast, the writing in this notebook is old and faded. It looks like the real reason T'Pol didn't attend his father's funeral is because he'd long since passed away himself. If we ask ourselves why this letter was sent to the Flower Feather Clan, why T'Pol always yearned for the sky, and how he got his hands on a relic from the Cinder City, it all points to one answer. That's right. T'Pol was my child. He was born during my days as a wingless wanderer. His birth gave me new hope. I wanted to become the kind of mother who spent her days as a valiant rider, soaring the skies. Not an aimless, wingless nobody. But his father wanted to settle down, to give his child a safe, sheltered life in his tribe. We fought about it constantly, until the love we once had for each other was gone. He started a new family with another traveler who was also looking to return home. And I went back to the Flower Feather Clan, alone. Oh, but... I had no idea that despite being raised among the children of Echoes, my child still harbored dreams of the skies. Can you imagine, Chaska? The joy and surprise I felt when he showed up at my door, asking to join the Flying Trials. Or how proud I was when he said he wanted to prove his own worth, rather than relying on my position as elder. And then the anguish that overcame me when he was rejected by the Kukasaurs and became wingless, just as I had after my injury. You've got a lot of nerve showing your face here. <laughs> Don't take this the wrong way, Chaska. I'm not here for a fight. I just want to talk. Isn't that your preferred way to resolve things? I trust you've learned of Tapal's wish on your way here. A world where the skies are for all of humanity to share. If only his dream can be realized, no one will ever have to lose their wings again. Our aerial prowess will be greater than ever before. War will never again come at such a great cost. The loss of Koichi is a tragedy that need never be repeated. So tell me, Chaska. Do you really wish to see the phlogiston wings forever grounded and gathering dust? Nothing you've said excuses all the conflict you've caused. You mean the argument back at the tribe? It was a necessary measure. Sometimes this is the only way to accelerate the pace of progress. Is a mother harming her children when she coaxes them into swallowing a bitter pill? Of course not. It is a brief moment of suffering for the greater good, and the child would come to understand this in due course. The phlogiston wings are that bitter pill. We will never progress as a tribe if we cling to the scraps the Kukasaurs offer us. Once the people have embraced the phlogiston wings, they will never look back. Even if they learn how the refined phlogiston is sourced, they will convince themselves that the sacrifice of a few Kukasaurs is a small price to pay for our dominion over the skies. But this I had not anticipated. I barely had the chance to introduce the phlogiston wings to the tribe before you found this place. 
Your plan was hardly foolproof. <laughs> Yet, it can still be salvaged. Chaska, Traveler, you are the hope of humanity. I'm sure you have your doubts about my methods, but know that my love for humanity and for Natlan is genuine. You know me, Chaska. And you know that I've always treated everyone in the Flower Feather Clan as my own children, as fellow humans. Surely you can understand my perspective. Hey, quit the quips! This is serious! Alpa, Natlan doesn't belong to humans alone. And truthfully, neither do I. How many times has the Abyss invaded Natlan now? And yet despite how much stronger it is than us, Natlan still stands as a nation of humans and Saurians. Peace imposed by force will crumble in a matter of days, because social bonds are what hold a civilization together. Weren't you the one that taught me that? And yet you would break the bond we share with our Saurian companions to take more power for ourselves? That's as stupid as hacking your own arm off to use it as a club. They are wild beasts, driven purely by instinct. How could they possibly understand human social bonds? Ugh, how did someone like her ever become a writer? <laughs> you overestimate them. They bow to the strong and shun the weak. That's all there is to it. They never gave Tepal a second glance when he was at his lowest, nor me when I returned injured from the cinder city it's all about survival of the fittest for them plain and simple they obeyed me once i proved myself stronger than them but the moment it serves them better they'll abandon me in a heartbeat you're wrong alpa they only reject the wingless because they don't want to fly anyone to their death hmm jaska i will promise you this only the unruliest wild cucosaurs will be used for phylogiston extraction. The ones who have nothing else to offer to humanity. Well, that's too bad. Because I know a few unruly wild cucosaurs who don't think that idea is going to fly. Namely my mom, my sister, and me. And the others? To us, they're friends, family, even children. So if you want to put any of them in one of your cages, you're going to have to go through us. Is that right? I knew you might be difficult to convince. Maybe this will change your mind. Careful. Don't make any rash decisions. Unless you want to see her suffer. <laughs> oh no, that's one of the extraction cages! I told my subordinates to take control of the tribe while I was away. Luckily for them, our strongest warrior and our most powerful ally aren't there to stop it. Take control? What are you planning to do with Mutota and its supporters? Merely accelerate their inevitable downfall. They cannot stand in the way of progress forever. It is not the move I wish to make, but I'm afraid you and your friends force my hand. And since you insist on imposing me too, I have no choice but to keep you here until the dust has settled. So that's what you meant by I just want to talk. You never intended to negotiate. You just wanted to stall us. No, Chaska. I genuinely hoped I could win you over. You are the strongest warriors we have. Put down your weapons, and I promise you that no harm will come to this young Saryan. I just need you to stay here for the next couple of weeks or so, while my people consolidate their power. Then, I will give her back to you, and you will be free to leave. 
as long as the majority supports our vision. Even the Pyro Archon could not meddle in our internal affairs. Your vision is deranged, and the Flower Feather Clan will never support it. You sure about that? Then wait here and see. Time will tell. What do we do? Even if the whole tribe fights back, Mutota's in grave danger! Stop delaying the inevitable! Drop your weapons and get into the cages! Now! Uh, she's still holding Chime hostage. Is there really no other way? <sighs> Koya? Huh? What are you yapping about? Stand down! Drop your weapons now! This instant! Damaged in the fight. If we don't think of something fast, this whole workshop is gonna fall apart. No. They're directly beneath us. My beloved tribe! Okay. Uh... It's too powerful. This ain't a toy like last time. I don't think I can just throw it aside. But... But we need to get it far away before it explodes. Then the tribe will be safe, and so will this workshop. Koya, remember when we were kids? Come on, let's take this thing high up into the sky. Don't worry. I know I can get rid of it before it explodes. We're talking some surface wounds at most. All I need is for you to catch me at the end. Just like old times. Ugh, I can't hold it back anymore! We have to go! Ugh! Don't be insane! Ugh! Alpha! What are you... You're a fool, Jaska! Why would you choose such a risky solution? We cannot entrust the safety of our tribe to this wild Saurian! <laughs> I'm the fool! You really think you can stand a better chance than me? <laughs> sure, it may be asking too much for an ex-Wingless to escape the blast radius in time. But I can fly it a safe distance away. Even if it's the last thing I do! Here. This should be high enough to save the clan. What? You don't get to die a hero today.
Koya, are you hurt? Let me take a look at you. What do you mean, I'm fine? Didn't I tell you to catch me on your back? Why did you try to shield me from the blast? Accident? Yeah, right. Seriously, you're as stubborn as ever. Cheska, Koya! <laughs> How are things looking here? I think that's putting it mildly. I owe you one. Again. Oh, but be honest. Do you still think Kukasaurus can't form bonds? <sighs> Mom. I'll figure out the refinement problem. I'll find a way. You don't need to worry about it. I just need some more time. That's all I ask. Please just trust me. Just this once. The Flower Feather Clan yield to the strong. And it's up to the winners to define what strength means. So it looks like... It's my turn to yield. Koya! Koya! So, you're absolutely sure it's not because of the explosion? Yes. For the 10,000th time, I'm sure. But the blast barely touched her. The reason she fainted was old injuries playing up, compounded by overexertion in recent days. The moment she finally relaxed, all the built-up stress finally caught up with her. And no wonder. Honestly, she's just like you. Anyway, now you know how we feel when you go off risking life and limb. Your mother and I would both appreciate it if you lived less dangerously. You know she wrote to me from the Masters of the Nightwind just to scold me for not doing enough to keep an eye on you. If she wasn't so busy with work, you can bet she'd come back here and chew us both out in person. I'll find an opportunity to apologize to her. I promise. You'd better. No more avoiding us, okay? And don't get me started on all the checkups you've missed. Got it. Got it. Huh? Koya? You're awake! I'll... I'll go let everyone know. Hey! But we're not done talking! Ah... What are we gonna do with her, hmm? Even after everything that's happened, she still hasn't figured out how to start the conversation with you. She keeps saying, I don't think Koya has forgiven me yet. But if you ask me, she's the one who's scared to open up and have an honest conversation. For all her confidence, she's a very sensitive soul underneath. You'd think as a peacemaker, she of all people would know how to reconcile with her family after a falling out. She must have been a handful growing up. Thank you for being there for her. And of course, thank you for keeping her safe when you were up there in the sky. Koya, Uncle Kuzco, we're here! Ha! I was just telling her that she's not to go chasing danger with Chaska ever again. Kuzco, I understand how you must feel. But it's all thanks to Koya and Chaska's efforts that the Airborne Workshop didn't come crashing down on our heads. Oh, 
Paimon almost forgot to ask. They didn't hurt you while we were gone, did they? Thankfully, when her co-conspirators tried to arrest me, I was out coaching Koyer and Junan. The two of them were a huge help. They took care of things while I went around rallying the resistance. So, in the end, Alpa's would-be revolt didn't really get off the ground. And as it turns out, not all of the wingless want to see our dear Saurian friends replaced with phlogist and power gizmos. I'm so sorry you got mixed up in this, by the way. We should have caught on to Alpa's scheme sooner. We could have saved so many Kukasaurs from getting hurt. Most of the Airborne Workshop has now been dismantled. We've just left one small, harmless part intact. And repurposed it as a jail for Alpa and her cronies. Let's see how they like being locked up in a sky prison! So, it looks like there's just one less conflict left to resolve. Peacemaker, you're up. <sighs> I said I had to wait until things had blown over, didn't I? And now they have. But I still have no idea what to say. Koya, I just want to say, I'm sorry for how things went down back then. this mean you're... you're not mad at me anymore? There's that family likeness coming through again. But that day, when we ran into each other... Huh? So then, when did you finally make your peace with it? Woo-hoo! <laughs>